Let me ask you this controversial question. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you think parasites are overdiagnosed, underdiagnosed, or right the spot, <laughs> right spot on? I think overdiagnosed would be mine. Well, and I think too, it's almost like hydrogen sulfide SIBO. Like, mm. I feel though as though people are like, oh, we can't find anything else. Could be a parasite Must that's a not parasite. on a, a stool test. And maybe again, yep. like your stool testing shows some parasites that are registered. Yep. Um, specifically, like the GI map has parasites that they yep. flag. Um, and, and I know that like life cycle of a parasite can affect how it shows up on a test mm-hmm. too. So I just find a lot of times it's overdiagnosed or, and maybe even that's the, the wrong way of putting it. It's overemphasized. Over hypothesized. The... Right. Like it's. Perhaps. There's too much energy going just to the parasite instead of energy around the whole environment of the parasite and analyzing the whole case in the context of you having that parasite. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah I, I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. Um, that. I think what I've observed and why I asked that question to start us off is that I've observed there... There are people who I think have parasites and they are not adequately diagnosed. And right. then when they when they are, it's like, whoa. But yeah, I think that there's some gray zone in between where like not every parasite requires treatment and not everybody who thinks that they have parasites actually has a parasite. What I I think what I was gonna say is that I get I do I think that there's this element of like desperation, people looking for answers, wanting answers, and honestly. Who would not find the concept of Holy Grail super appealing? Like right. if you had just one thing that you needed to kill and then you were done and like your IBS magically disappeared after you killed that one magical thing, like, oh, all day, every day we would look for that one thing. Right. But it's usually not that simple. Even with the patient who had Giardia, it was like a huge, whoa, we need to what, treat right. this. And treating it until stool testing came back negative was one part of the journey, but there was, oh, this was the point I was starting to make, is that there is damage that is done by the parasite itself. And then there's oftentimes a wake of inflammation or dysbiosis or epithelial damage, and you need to correct those as well. So it's not even (laughs) just about killing the Giardia, even though Giardia is very worthy of killing. Like, yeah, you treat the Giardia, but then you have to focus your efforts on things like microbiome diversity and rehabbing that ecosystem that was just decimated and patching up the gut epithelial barrier, AKA if you have a leaky gut, you got to treat that. You got to treat the inflammation and basically just kind of soothe your poor gut because it just went through a lot. So it's like, don't, don't hyper-focus on the killing of the parasite. Make sure that you're still doing the healing work and make sure that you, you know, you want to have a good, healthy immune system that is capable of helping you overcome parasites, and you want a good, healthy epithelial barrier, and you want a good, healthy microbiome. It's it's really not as simple, even when you do have the one smoking gun. It's right. never about the one smoking gun. Um, so I wanted to make that point for starters. But I know for Giardia, I've seen some research that one of the ways that it does its nasty bidding is that it leaves behind a wake of dysbiosis and yeah. lower microbial diversity. So in particular, if you've ever had Giardia, you probably need to focus a lot of your effort on rehabbing the diversity and the ecosystem in your gut, as opposed to just like nuking it and moving on with your life. So right. for what it's worth. Right. No, I think that's such a good point. And I think it's a good point that focusing on building up your defenses again, after really any pathogenic type infection but i think especially for giardia um is super super key what about let's let's paint a picture if somebody came to you and they were like look man i've got parasites i just know it how would you go about testing them probably do you think probably the gi map would be your go-to maybe Uh, again it depends on their relationship probably to Hmm. their provider maybe their primary care provider because, I mean, they could do parasite testing through what you were saying, LabCorp. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that a GI map would be something that would be easy for me to run, probably a little bit more expensive for them than running like a, a lab corp test. You'd be surprised though. That's something really? I just started recently. Yeah. I had something now, I don't know. I don't know if this woman has particularly crappy insurance right? or, you know, I don't know if this is a fluke or if this is the norm and nobody else has told me about it. Have to drink creek water. Don't drink the creek water. Don't drink the creek water <laughs> or you're going to get that. What's your parasite's name? Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.